It all started when I was six, almost seven. Before then, I had been a very confident and outgoing child. But then there was trouble between my parents, and when my father took me, everything changed. I missed my mom and my sister, but I knew that I had no way to get to them any more than I had of jumping to the moon. Besides that, Daddy never talked about them, about anything that we'd done together or about them, and it was just him and I now, a new era. And so I didn't think about them or the memories of them or the person that I'd been with them. You want to talk about anxiety? I've had anxiety. Started in my late teens, early 20s. I had it so bad, I got anorexia. Not nervosa, just anorexia. I lost my appetite for over two years. People kept saying, just don't eat, you'll get hungry. But four or five days later, I haven't eaten and I'm still not hungry. Started to get worried. My stomach ended up forgetting what it was supposed to do with food. And, well, I lost weight. Well, I'll be frank with you, I lost my period. I didn't have it for six months, I had it one time and then I didn't have it again for over two years. They did all kinds of tests to try to figure out what it was, first of them being a pregnancy test. It was negative. I could have told them that, but I did tell them that, but they had to know for sure, so. Speaking of cows, I had a boyfriend once whose mama raised cows. They had quite a few acres. They had a field, and they had a pond, and they had some woods. And the cows would often go up into the woods to calve. Now, one year this heifer went up into the woods to calve, first calf. And I learned that there were spring calves and there were winter calves. And this was most definitely a winter calf. It was so cold out. I'd say it was freezing, but it was probably more like 22 degrees out there. The ground was frozen solid. And it's about 11 o'clock at night. I'm in there watching late night TV, all warm and toasty. And in comes my boyfriend. Hon, I need you to hold the flashlight. So I put on my shoes and I traipsed out there across the field up into the woods and there's this poor cow. I still had continuity though with my father and with who I'd been with him. But then when he got arrested and I went back to live with my mother, it happened again. My father committed suicide soon after I went back to live with them and I mean they didn't talk about him or my time with him and so I had lost touch with who I'd been before for almost a third of my entire life before that and now I lost touch with the rest of me and it was as if I appeared at the age of 10 out of nowhere with no memories, no identity, just there with this new family. My sister didn't remember our father very well. She remembered me, but our stepfather was her father. Desire. I just got a new journal to help me explore my desires. Whenever you say that word, desire, people always think of sex. You usually think of sex. Advertising. Haven't it tried to tie every desire that we have? Desire for hamburgers and cars and soda into that, if not the strongest, almost the strongest desire humans have. Then they did all other kinds of blood tests. They did ultrasounds. They did x-rays. You should have seen that x-ray technician. I mean, he gives me the barium, and then he says to think about my favorite food. So I'm standing there in front of the x-ray machine thinking about my favorite food, and he asked me, are you thinking about it? And I said, yes. And he goes, hmm. Ended up, he had to come over with that big old thick radiation proof glove and kind of stand back while the x-ray machine's going and push on my stomach, push on my stomach to get the barium to go through because my stomach just wasn't working. The neighbors are there. You see, they tried to call the vet, but it's late at night and it's freezing, below freezing, and he's not coming. And the calf is twisted funny. 
And so they do everything they can to try to get that calf out. They get together, one neighbor holds it, and my boyfriend and another neighbor try to pull out the, the calf, and it won't come, and it won't come, and it won't come. There's just this leg, and this hoof, and this leg sticking out. Finally, they got a tractor and a chain and tried to pull the calf out with the tractor. And it just, eventually they realized the calf is dead, the heifer is dying. So my boyfriend goes and he gets his 22. Because he doesn't want to freak out the neighbors with this loud boom from his shotgun at whatever ungodly hour it has turned out to be. I look to my new family and to my friends and to my teachers for cues on, on how to be and what to be. Most people do this. Look to others for cues like that. Judge their behavior, their actions against the reactions of others to know how to act appropriately and how to fit into society. But I did it completely. So, he shoots it maybe three times in the head and it doesn't even phase it. I mean, doesn't even knock it out. So he goes back and he gets a knife and he tries to slit its throat. The cowhide is tough and it doesn't just slit. He had to grab hold of that cow's neck and saw through the hide. And when the blood finally started to gush, he turns away real quick like, and he says, let's get out of here, let's go. And then it's as if fulfilling your desire for hamburgers will be the same as fulfilling your desire for sex. Manipulative, but I've been thinking there's more than one kind of desire. And so we left it there in the freezing cold in the dark to bleed to death. I have the desire for beauty. And not just beauty for me, but beauty in my surroundings, beauty in things visible. We came up early in the morning at dawn to bury it with a tractor. And I'll never forget. It was laying there with its head turned and its eyes rolled up in the direction that we had gone, that we had left. And I could only imagine it, what it was like for it to be in all that pain and then have all these people come, try to pull out its insides, try to pull it out with a chain and a tractor, then shoot it three times in the head and then slit its throat and walk away to leave it in the freezing cold, to bleed to death, in the dark, in the woods, all alone. I thought how awful that that wouldn't come. I ended up eating a lot of things with vitamin E and drinking a lot of alfalfa tea and just eating a lot basically of things like granola and oatmeal, and oatmeal raisin cookies and chocolate and almonds and things high in calcium and calories. Eventually, I just, well, I got back on schedule. 